Good morning, tube viewers. We're going to go over something today that eh, I've been waiting a while to do. Um, well, I'm going to go over my eco diesel again. It's what I basically do. Um, but we've had a year and a half with this truck now. Um, put 35,000 miles on it. And kind of my views on would I own another one? Um, what do I do with this one? Um, have I had any issues with this one? So far, I haven't had any major issues with it. Um, like I said, it, I bought it in October of 2017 with 74,000 miles. Uh, complete history, which was nice. Uh, the original owner bought it from the dealership. It was a special order truck. It's an outdoorsman, 392 gears, 4x4 with the automatic, uh, the automatic, uh, diff uh, not differential, the automatic uh, uh, four-wheel drive. So I've got four-wheel drive auto. Uh, I think it's a 4445 or 4444. Four, four. I don't know which one it is. It's one of those. Um, so, um, special order truck. He kept it for till 14, till 17. Um, traded in with 74,000 miles to the same dealer he bought it from. Everything had been done at the dealer. I had full records of everything that had been done. Um, had a couple issues when it was new. It had the fuel system replaced at 1,200 miles. It had the, the, the shake that I guess they came out with. You know, when they came out with the 14, some of them had a vibration issue and that was looked at at like oh, 1200 or 12 miles i mean it's but other than that up until 74,000 miles it was all routine tire rotations um oil changes fuel filter changes stuff like that so felt pretty confident in buying it they gave me a good price on it um so anyway <clears throat> But my year and a half of having it, I've put 35,000 miles on it. It's now got 110,000 miles on it. Um, haven't had any major issues. I've had one self-inflicted issue. That was me screwing around with it and didn't tighten up a clamp. And I blew a hose clamp off the, uh, the high side uh, turbo going into the uh, intercooler, which... I, no big deal I get a code scanner just got in there and cleared out the codes and ready to rock and roll um, but so far reliability's been really good uh, engine's been really good I get uh, 22 to 27 miles to the gallon depending on the time of year um, then I've got you know I, I do a regiment of things with it whenever I do oil changes and stuff like that I use hot shots for everything um you know you know this goes in about once a month this goes in every third oil change this goes in every every fill up um i've even used the winterizer i didn't have any problems with the winterizer the winterizer worked great never had any problems when it got I mean, in this year in missouri we had a lot of snow we had a lot of cold weather uh never had a problem with the truck starting running uh, but then again, I plug it in when it's, you know, 30 degrees. Uh, I plug it in all the time. Always let it warm up. Uh, it just hasn't been an issue. I mean, I have had issues with the truck now. At 35,000 miles, I've got... It came to me with Michelin tires, which I will never, ever buy again. And this seems to be a Ram thing for this generation of Ram. This fourth generation Ram seems to demolish tires. I mean, it ruins rear tires, and that's with them being rotated. Um, another thing is, when you use four-wheel drive like I did this winter, because we had some pretty deep snows, it also demolishes front tires, so I need to find a, a harder compound tire. Um, but other than that, it wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, so, my next next few weeks here I gotta go buy new tires um, but in that 35,000 miles uh, we'll go over some things too um, within that 35,000 miles I've roughly spent a thousand dollars in oil changes because there have been four oil changes 
Um, usually they're about $175 a pop. Um, I do my own oil changes. I only did, I did one oil change with a dealer and it was $175 until I got to the point where they're like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll fill your def up. Sure. Figured $17, fill up my def. No, it was $23 a bottle and they didn't even fill the def up all the way. Um, so I won't do that again. I do, I still do def. I still am running you know undeleted it's still completely factory tuned factory big scr system everything still seem to be seems to be working very well um and uh it uh it, it so far has been really it's been a great truck um i hear a lot of horror you know read a lot of horror stories hear a lot of horror stories um that you know oh these motors grenade they just eat themselves alive and I have kind of a theory on that and I'm not gonna not gonna say it's a true theory or a scientific theory or anything like that I think it's the gearing really I do this truck has 392 gears um, so when you're running 75 miles an hour on the highway like I do I mean I drive this truck almost 486 miles a week um, so I'm running 75 miles an hour a day the tack stays at 2,000 RPMs. It holds 43 pounds in oil pressure. I think with the lower gears or with the higher gears, like the 355 gears where they're trying to get more fuel mileage out of the truck and they're trying to stretch that out a little bit, I think the engine lugs because a lot of times they'll run at 1,500 RPM. They're not keeping enough oil pressure. And I think eventually it eats the, it eats the bearings up if you're running a def system where you're doing a lot of regens and you're washing out the oil and you're not driving far enough and anything like that you know my theory on these trucks is they're diesel the scr system was not made for running short trips all day long um, they're made to be on the highway they're made to just get on the highway and run and drive and tow and i do all that i run it on the highway every day i tow you know, I tow a seven thousand, oh, seven plus thousand pound camper with it. You know, all summer long and all spring long and into the fall. Um, so, you know, when we take this thing on road trips, we, it's been to Ohio, it's been to South Dakota, it's been to Nebraska, it's it's been it's been it's been to a lot of places since I've had it in that year and a half. That also explains why I have thirty five thousand miles on it. But. Um, it's been a good truck um i do have some complaints um you know one is of course with any chrysler product i've, I've ever owned and i've owned uh, well I've, I've owned four pickup trucks um i've owned probably four cars a minivan all all chrysler all fca um and they all have you know paint issues they all have you know little things here and there that you get used to i mean you know my last truck was a gen 2 two-wheel drive quad cab with a five speed great truck uh lasted 160,000 miles still ran when i sold it but you know 17 miles to the gallon compared to 22 to 27 eh, it's kind of eating me out of house and home and that's kind of why i bought this truck I bought this truck because I wanted something that got good fuel mileage but was comparable with what I had. So my last truck had a 26 gallon fuel tank. This truck has a 26 gallon fuel tank. Uh, last truck had 220 horsepower. This has got 240 horsepower. Uh, I had a roughly 220 pound feet of torque while this one's got 420. Um, six foot bed, which is what I had on the last truck. I wanted the bigger cab because the quad cab was a little small. I uh, also wanted four-wheel drive because my last truck was not four-wheel drive. Um, the And it sucks when you live 45 miles away from your job and it snows and you're like, well, I'm out here in the country and uh, they don't plow it very much. Um, then the, uh, the other thing was, uh, you know, I just wanted a comparable truck to what I had. Because my other truck suited my needs and I was like, I, I want the better fuel economy. I drive far enough. I want the diesel, you know, 
longevity. <laughs> um, so far, I've gotten that. Now, as far as cost of ownership of the truck, other than it chewing up tires, um, oil changes have been about a little over a thousand dollars, and that is including the, uh, you know, that stuff there. Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, fuel savings. I save roughly, roughly a tank of fuel a month. So you figure over 18 months, I've saved $900 in fuel. Um, and that's at the cost of diesel. It's not at the cost of regular gasoline, but I've, I've saved close to $900. Um, so it's kind of a wash as far as the cost of a tank of DEF, which is about $20. And then the oil, which is almost 60 bucks. The filters, which are $35. And I've kind of, um, to make that more equal, I don't do, um, like they say, you know, you do one oil change, you do just the oil and oil filter. And then your next oil change, you do your air filter, your fuel filter, and your oil filter. Well, I've kind of changed that up a bit. On my just oil service, I do the air filter, and then the other service, I do the fuel filter and oil filter. So it actually kind of balances itself out. Um, so at least there, I'm keeping my costs fairly consistent as far as what I can do. Um, the other one is, you know, I've got some complaints about, of course, you know, the paint on this one. Um, it has, it has met my mailbox three times not by me thank you very much but i've had you know i've got a, a a 17 year old that you know backed over my mailbox that was fun um so put a nice uh nice little, little dent scratch in my truck um and then my wife in the snow slid into the same mailbox and then of course i had uh, a neighbor's kid over here and had a hiked up uh, go-kart in, in the next snow run over my mailbox and destroy it and uh, that was the end result of that so my truck and my mailbox don't get along um, the other thing <clears throat> as far as issues that I've had with it I've had um, towing not too many issues but I've got an issue now with my cooling fan uh, it doesn't like to stand alone or go into high speed um, when the engine gets hot and I've been told that's a computer issue good thinking guys let's let's let the computer do everything awesome good job um, my next thing I'm gonna do with it is uh, you know not a cold air, but a uh, Canaan drop-in filter. I had that on my last truck, and it worked out really well. Um, the air boxes in these are pretty open. You really don't need a cold air box. Um, take the intake muffler out of it, and you know, just just run it with factory tubing. Um, I haven't done the my one of my previous videos where I had a. Uh, I'd taken my EGR apart and cleaned it and took all the, uh, the foam off the engine. I haven't done an update on that yet. I will do that. Um, so I don't know exactly how clean that's staying, but so far it's been pretty good. Um, haven't noticed any drivability issues with it. Um, taking everything off the high high pressure fuel pump and all that stuff I think that's really saved the high pressure fuel pump yeah it gets a little noisy and clicky um, but that's kind of normal it just doesn't get so hot which I think is, is saving quite a bit um, another thing that I've noticed with this truck and I don't know you know how many other people have this problem but I've, I've heard of it being an issue um, is when it snows or rains or you have sorry about my hand I do this on my phone it's just what I do I don't have a camera I'm not a youtuber by profession I actually drive a truck for my profession um, I drive a drive a diesel so <clears throat> but anyway 
um, they're on my A pillar, right about here, uh, it leaks. Now it's only done it whenever I've had like a ton of snow on my truck and I didn't clear it off, it drips out of there and I think there's a wrinkle in my weather stripping up there that runs down the front of the windshield and that's um, causing water to get behind there and, and go down the A-pillar. Um, another thing is sticky buttons on the steering wheel. You know, you're, I've had a few issues with the sticky buttons and I've heard, you know, a lot of people have that issue and it just seems to be a thing. Um, I just live with it. It's, you know, get, tap it a couple more times, it'll work. Uh, another thing is up at the top of my windshield where the the black matrix dots are starting to actually delaminate, which is kind of irritating. Um, but eventually the windshield's going to have to be replaced anyway. I've got chips all over my windshield from you know driving so many so many miles on the highway every you know every day. Um, but other than that, the truck has been very reliable. Everything has worked great. The stereo system is still working out really well. Uh, still very responsive. Um, haven't had any issues with that. Screens or anything like that. Um, I haven't had... I've had it taken in for the occupancy module updates. Um... So far, that seems to be working pretty well. Not that I plan on rolling my truck anytime soon. Um, interior's held up pretty well. Um, not that I'm extremely rough on it. Uh, my family is, but I'm not. Um, plus, I've got the rubber floor mats all over the place. All the factory, all the factory rubber floor mats all over the truck. Um, but really. In conclusion, um, do I think it's a bad truck? No. Um, do I listen to all the hype? <sighs> Not really. Um, does it make me nervous to own it? Eh, no. Um, I mean, I think if it would have been a bad one, it would have went bad by now. Um, and plus, as I've shown you, I you know I do my oil changes at seventy five hundred miles. Um, just because I know I have the SCR system and, and all that, and even though I drive, you know, tons and tons of miles. Um, yeah, I mean, that's one thing I, I haven't gotten on this truck is a regen message because I think it's just because I drive it so far. Um, the other thing is I, I let the turbo cool down whenever I'm done driving it, uh, no matter what. It sits out here for a minute or two and, and, and runs and idles and cools down. Um, same thing when I get to the office. Um, I also try not to drive very fast between things. Um, let the truck warm up to 100 degrees before I move. Keep it at 2,000 RPMs until it hits 150 degrees. And, you know, I mean, just a lot of things that maybe irritate other drivers. I really don't care. Um, sorry if you're one of the other drivers that has to follow me. Just get used to it or go around me. Because, um, again, I've been driving. I've, I've driven medium. I've driving medium diesel medium duty diesels for 20 years um i had two years before that in a diesel shop so i've i'm used to diesels i've been with diesels for 22 years this is just my first personally owned diesel um again would i buy another one i probably wouldn't because i pull a camper and I think our next truck's going to be a, a three-quarter ton, but if I didn't pull a camper and just wanted to keep going with what I'm doing and just use it as a back-and-forther family vehicle, you know, take trips with it, yeah, I would have another one, especially since they re you know, they announced they're going to bring out the 2019s, which I have been waiting for, and apparently there's some design changes whether they're good or bad or not well, we'll find out um makes more horsepower cool and i mean nobody's getting away from having problems with the diesels ford's having problems with their three liter diesel chevy hasn't introduced their three liter diesel yet and they haven't had a super track record with a house-built diesel um 
so we'll find out. Um, I mean, I do like the idea of an inline three liter six cylinder because I really like the idea of a Cummins. I mean, that's what's in, that's what's been in all my trucks for 20 years is I've gone through all the generations of Cummins. I've had a five nine, you know, five nine twelve valve. Drove that for a couple years. I had a five nine twenty. I had two five nine twenty four valves. One with EGR, one without. Um, and my last one, which was a 5.924 valve, uh, did great up till 500,000, and I'm going to say kilometers because the company that I work for, the trucks at that time came from Canada, so everything was in kilometers. So 350,000 miles, right about 300,000 miles, I started having problems with EGR and putting back pressure into my cooling system and blah, 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 but the truck still ran it they had it in service for 16 years at 500,000 kilometers um, I think it's long gone now I don't know if they took it away from me in 2015 but it, it had 560,000 kilometers and was still running and then uh, my new truck is uh, international with uh, six seven Cummins that truck's been awesome too but I have had def system problems it, it, the def crapped out at uh 60 60 65,000 miles but of course I, i'm not paying for that so well, you can have fun with that um so if the def system craps out on this one of, of course i'm going to get it tuned uh, i'm still thinking about getting it tuned my big thing right now is the truck's warranty is dead by 10,000 miles go figure um my thing is now I'm trying to find a reputable diesel shop in my area. Uh, my neighbor used to have a diesel. He had a uh, Duramax, a 2004, what they call the Cat Eye. Um, just at 200,000 miles, he sent it to the diesel shop because he thought he was having problems with his uh, um, fuel injectors making ticking noises and stuff like that. And They said, no, your injectors are great. Um, You've already got a deleted exhaust on your truck, so how about we tune it and get rid of the EGR because you don't need that. And that truck came back with some filthy problems. The turbo was starting to go bad. Well, starting to go bad. He didn't have any problems with the turbo before they tuned it. But after they tuned it, uh, check engine lights were on. The turbo was going bad. And start, you know, and granted, it started leaking coolant out of the back of the head. I'm not going to blame the shop. But after that, I'm definitely not going to use that shop, especially with this being a, you know, an engine nobody really knows about, um, unless you're Gail Banks. He seems to know a lot about it. Um, so my thing is I got to find, you know, find a, a reputable diesel shop. I mean, if you got one that's coming out of warranty or you want to buy one, I wouldn't necessarily be afraid of it. Just know what you're getting into because I did a lot of research on this before I even bought it so I still bought it because I like the idea and so far the idea has held out great for me um, maybe not so much with other people but for me it's held out pretty good um, but I would find a reputable diesel shop if you can find one that's got all of its records cool um, don't be afraid of them I've heard, I've, I've talked to a, a couple of other eco diesel owners. They absolutely love them. They haven't had any problems with them. Um, the dealership, I've talked to a, a, a commercial fleet guy. He's got tons of them that come through. Um, and they haven't had any problems. The, the salesmen love these trucks because they drive them miles and miles and miles. Um, and that's why I bought it, because I drive it miles and miles and miles. I mean, I would... I wouldn't say I would demolish a Hemi, but I think the Hemi would demolish me. <laughs> Unless I bought, you know, like my my neighbor over there, he's got that 2019, which is an awesome truck. Um, got a great deal on it. Hell, I if he wasn't going to buy it, I was. Um, but it's got 321 gear, so it's mainly made more for, you know, highway. Which he does great on the highway, but he can't really tow anything it's got less of a towing rating than this truck so 
you know, that's the other thing you got to watch out for. It's like, what am I going to do with this truck? What gearing am I going to have in it? Blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, for me, the, the lower end gearing was an accident. Um, that's benefited me well. Um, really wouldn't have mattered. I mean, in the long run, I'm glad I have it because, yeah, I mean, again, my theory just a theory, not scientific, not proven, not, not anything. Um, so don't come back and bash on me because I know somebody's going to the only it's YouTube. You always do. Um, so again, in conclusion, would I buy another one? Yeah. If it suited my needs, yeah, I would buy another one. It's, it's, you know, do I enjoy the one I have? Definitely enjoy the one I have. Do I, do I like it? Oh, I love it. I mean, even for its minor issues that I've got, you know, paint being fairly weak um, and some delaminating and every once in a while a leak and, well, crappy tires. I didn't choose the tires. They came with the truck. So, well, that just reminds me to go get harder compound tires. Um, would I tell anybody not to buy one? If they've never had a diesel, do your research, do your homework, don't be afraid, and there, you're going to get 58 different things from 58 different people. Um, hell, you're going to get 58 different things from me. Um, but, you know, just my ownership of it, I would recommend somebody to have one if they didn't. I, I wouldn't recommend it for somebody that does a lot of in town. Because then you are going to have all the problems, and you are going to, you know, see the 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 regens, and you're going to have these issues. And you know, unless you tune the truck out, which a lot of people do, I haven't done it yet because I I drive a truck. <laughs> I don't make that much. I mean, I make good money. I do, but then I, you know, got a life. So me and doing a tune, that uh, nah. As long as it ain't broke, I ain't gonna. You know, go screwing with it too much. Um, so I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a great thing, and it it will eventually happen. Um, I just haven't had the life and finances. And uh, I also want to say before I go, thank you for the handful and the handful of subscribers. Not that I'm trying to become this big YouTube sensation and I want to make money off YouTube. No, I I kind of enjoy my job some days. Um, and, but, but thanks. I'm, I'm glad. That's cool. I, I, uh, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, have any comments, positive or negative, let me know. Um, I really want to hear from other eco diesels that have had a positive experience. I know everybody hears about the negative ones. I really want to hear about a positive one because I'm a positive guy. You know, I haven't had that many problems with it. I really enjoy the truck. I think it was a great purchase. I think it's an awesome idea. I want to see it continue. Um, do I want to see less regulations on the diesels? Yes. Um, do I want to make my truck a coal roller? No. But, hey, you know, I mean, I just wanted to do its thing. Get me good fuel mileage. I don't care about saving a ton of money in fuel. You're not going to save a ton of money in fuel because you're paying more in oil, but... You know, hey, the idea that I can get on the highway with or without my camper and get awesome fuel mileage and do what I got to do, perfect. Um, that's what it's all about. Um, it's not about, hey, let's put a big stack in the back and let's roll some coal. Which, by the way, that annoys me. I mean, you do you, kitten, but no. Gross. Um in the stack yeah it looks cool until you want to use your bed um so anyway guys have a great day we'll talk to you later